What's cracking, people? Angelic Mayhem here. I want to welcome you to my second video on SimCity 5 or uh, SimCity 2013 if you prefer. Today I'm going to talk about the graphics setting in the game, which sadly isn't being talked about anywhere on the web. So I've tackled that problem by clawing and fighting my way onto one of the servers, putting together a little city, and then taking a bunch of screenshots. And the way I'm going to work this is I'm going to show you this city from two different angles. Uh, the wide view that you would see when you're building and zoning and such, and the street view. To start with, I want to show you the difference between all the graphics settings turned on and all the graphics settings turned off. This is everything turned on, and this is everything turned off. As you can see, there is a dramatic difference. I'm going to show you what each option does one by one. To start, we're going to go to the wide shot, since this is the camera most of us are using. In this shot, you can see the Washington Monument, the Sears Tower. That's right, the Sears Tower. You can ask anyone from Chicago to back me up. Uh, a stadium and some RCI. Here you can see what this shot looks like with the default settings. But we're going to make this image right here our base image. One by one, I'm going to turn on each setting and explain to you what it is so that you can see what it does. First up, textures. Textures are the paint applied to every building. When we jack the textures up to high, what you should notice is the terrain becomes much richer and darker, the windows on the buildings become more prominent and defined, and overall the buildings are softer and more pleasing. The downfall of high textures is that they take up a lot of computing time. So for older computers, you may start out fine, but as your city gets bigger, the sheer number of buildings will start to slow down the game. This is usually caused by the textures. Let's start out again with everything turned off. And this time we're going to jack up shadows to ultra. Shadows are obviously the shadows cast by buildings and terrain. It's 9 a.m. in this shot, so the shadows are dramatic and the sun is behind us. You should notice the mountains in the background cast shadows into their valley. The Washington Monument casts a major shadow down the street. The telephone poles cast shadows, and even the cars. Uh, the downfall of ultra-high shadows, or the ultra-high setting, is that for every object that casts a shadow, you have to calculate where that shadow is going to fall and then draw it. Uh, that's a lot of extra work, and you have to ask yourself how strongly you feel about having realistic shadows. Because Ultra will slow down your game pretty quickly without a killer graphics card. Which luckily I have, so it doesn't bother me. But even so, I leave shadows at medium. Which handles the big buildings and mountains and leaves everything else big. Back to our nothing shot. And then we're going to set geometry to high. Now, geometry is about the physical shape of the object. Uh, sometimes designers make things look like they have relief using textures, but as you can see, if you look closely, in SimCity, the bricks in the Washington Monument are physically in place. The roof of the Sears Tower Annex is rounded like it's supposed to be. The mountains are more rounded, and the power turbines in the distance are much better defined. Geometry gets a bad rap in video games, but I know a secret. Geometry actually does very little to affect the performance of your game. You'd have to have a pretty crappy computer to need to reduce this setting. So I say jack it to the max. Alright, now again we're going to start with the Z settings. And we're going to add tilt shift. Specifically, we set the tilt shift to more. Uh, as you can see, the background items, including, but to a much lesser effect, the stadium, have obtained a blur. Uh, I have no idea if blurring changes game performance. Um, I'll have to check on that and then get back to you in the description. Uh, but I do want you to notice that from this elevated perspective, there is no blurring in the foreground. Uh, that's going to come up again later. Uh, in this next image, I set the tilt shift to standard, and you can see that the blur has receded further into the background. Uh, in this shot here, uh, you can see them all side by side. Uh, finally, I want to show you what happens when you turn off anti-aliasing. Anti-aliasing smooths out edges and blends them in with their background. In this shot, anti-aliasing is on. But in this shot, I've turned it off. And you can see a stark difference, uh, especially if you look at the windows of the Sears Tower, 
uh, the solar reflectors in the background, and the streetcar tracks and road lines. In fact, while anti-aliasing does affect everything you see, it only really matters the further away you get. Things just appear less crisp and realistic. But when you turn off anti-aliasing, you gain a huge performance boost. So if you can get over the gaminess of the jagged lines, you can do away with anti-aliasing. Now let's jack up all the graphic settings and see what we get. Uh, this is the same shot with everything turned on. And as you can see, uh, when you have a high performance machine and a kick-ass graphics card, the game looks pretty sweet. Now I want to focus on the streetcar line right in front of the Washington Monument. Because right now, I just turned off anti-aliasing. As you can see, there's practically no difference to the overall game, and you probably wouldn't have noticed the road lines or the stadium windows if I didn't point them out. Same shot, setting tilt shift to less. Now we're going to take a trip down the street level to see how the graphic settings have an impact on your sims. Uh, behold the following traffic jam. Lowest settings possible. And now we jack it up to high. As you can see, there is a huge difference. Shadows on the cars because of the ultra setting. The cars have working tail lights. The gas station sign has a logo. The solar arrays have depth and texture. And you could theoretically count the bricks on the firehouse. Now remember earlier I told you how the more setting on tilt shift didn't really have an effect in the wide shot of your city. Here's what more tilt shift looks like on the street level. It's crazy blurry in the foreground. This is like living in that little town that Mr. Rogers used to obsess over. Even standard tilt shift has a slight disorienting effect on street level. So I recommend that if you're going to float down here to check out your sims, you should turn tilt shift to the lowest setting so you don't get nauseated. Uh, here back again at full graphics, I want to show you the changes that shadows make. In this image, the shadows are set to off. So clearly at this distance, increasing the shadows gives you some nice photorealism. But while you're plopping buildings, you shouldn't bother wasting the calculations. Uh, our standard shot and our anti-aliasing turned off. As you can see, the image actually looks a little better. And finally, one last time, here's our standard shot. And our textures drop to low. Uh, I see very little difference between these two shots, except for a little extra blurriness, which we certainly don't need because at this point, the tilt shift is giving me vertigo. I think it's safe to say that lighting is important to the overall look of the game. And if your graphics card can handle it, push it to the limit. Uh, I'm not impressed with textures at all. I leave mine set at low. I only use ultra shadows if I need to take a photo for my blog. Uh, during the game, I set it to medium just for a little bit of ambiance. Geometry is a must. Uh, jack it to high. It's not going to affect you at all. Animation detail I didn't really cover because I'm using screenshots, and uh, that's more of a video thing. But basically, it defines how much crap is moving around your board at any given time. Uh, I turn it down because I rarely zoom into street level to watch all that stuff. Tilt shift, I never use more because it's too much for me. Uh, standard is good for wide angle and less is best when you're down on the street. Anti-aliasing barely makes a dent in this game and sometimes makes things look worse. Uh, only use it if you're taking photographs. And finally, this last option, which we didn't really cover, is uh, the filters. Filters change the overall color scheme of the game. It's up to you to, if you enjoy that sort of thing. Uh, you can fool around with those. I haven't been able to find one that I can stand for more than five minutes, so I just use the none. If you're really interested, I have screenshots on the blog of each filter and what it does, and you can check them out there. So to wrap it all up, customize your graphics based on the ability of your graphics card, your visual preferences, and change them when you go from wide planning down to the street. Thus endeth the second installment of my SimCityVersity video blog. You can find the link to my other articles in the description below. Give me a thumbs up or a subscribe if you like this video, and I'll see you next time.